Hello and welcome to the First United Methodist Church in Madisonville, Tennessee. My name is Jan Johnson. I would like to welcome our members and our guests to the parking lot for our in-person and live streaming worship service on November 29th, the first Sunday of Advent in 2020. The First United Methodist Church during this worship service is performing and streaming musical materials that are either in the public domain or permitted mm -hmm. under performance and streaming licenses from CCL. Copies of these license certificates are in the church office. If you're watching online, please register your attendance at 1umc.com. On the home page, click on the register attendance link at the top or under the hamburger icon at the top left on your mobile device. Answer the questions and click OK. Some of you may have problems accessing the new attendance link and will need to clear your browser history. Instructions to do this are listed on the web page. Episode 6 of Pastor Keith's Bible Study Lesson is uploaded on 1umcm.com for you to enjoy when you have a quiet moment. The series involves taking a look at the Gospel of Mark. The Reopening Task Force along with the Board of Trustees are working hard to prepare for an indoor worship. We will be ready to open our doors once we see appropriate drops in the COVID-19 cases in Monroe County. The November-December issue of the Upper Room is available in the white toad at the front entrance to the sanctuary. Be sure to stop by and pick up one for yourself and a neighbor or family member as long as they last. The digital copy will be available soon. Send Reba an email if you would like for her to send you the digital copy. Blessing box needs. Shelf stable food, bread, peanut butter, jelly, cereal bars, fruit and jello cups and other non-perishable items along with toiletries like toothpaste, deodorant, bath soap and shampoo. Check our ministries tab at the top of 1umcm.com for details of how to help. The needs of the Good Shepherd Center are also uh, they're very needy. Fruit cups, individually packaged kids breakfast foods such as oatmeal, cereal. Check our ministries tab at the top of 1umcm.com for details of how to help. I ask you now to wave or digi digitally greet the members of our church family and our guests via text or Facebook message. May the peace of Christ be with you. Also with you. Our call to worship this morning is Emmanuel, Emmanuel. The words and music to which you will find in the downloadable affirmation and hymnal link on our main page at 1umc.com. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome, everyone. We're glad to have you with us here in the uh, in the parking lot, the upper parking lot here at First United Methodist Church, or join us online at uh, at oneumcm.com. We want to uh, have our call to worship from Isaiah chapter nine. It's printed in our bulletin. You can find it online uh, and. Share along with us, if you will. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, 
everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Let us share together in our hymn of praise. Lift up your head, you mighty gates. affirmation of faith as we say each week uh, we we take an affirmation of faith from early in the Christian church or from the New Testament itself to share words that remind us that Christians uh, we all believe the same basic faith in our Lord Jesus Christ together the Apostles Creed is perhaps the oldest statement of faith that not found in in exactly in the New Testament and so it re reveals the teaching, the basic teaching of the first apostles, the first disciples of Jesus. Christians, if you're asked what you believe, you may answer by saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. see everyone here this morning and it's great to have so many of you joining us uh, by uh, by online this morning we want to share it is the beginning of the app we want to share in the lighting of the advent wreath candle to do that are Dwayne and Reba Dopkins
Good morning. Welcome to this time. Isaiah 61 through 3 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the rightness of your dawn. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ our hope. May the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. O come, O come, Lord Jesus. Well, we're glad to see everyone here on this first Sunday of Advent. I said that I'd uh, do everything I could to at least wear a robe on the Sundays of Advent and Lent. And today I'm wearing uh, an old robe that uh, is probably thicker than most people's winter coats. So uh, you may have noticed it's a little cool outside for those in the parking lot or joining us in their cars, uh, but we're glad that we're here with the warm heart of the Lord to share in, uh, in our praise and worship of God this morning. What I do, do want to remind you, we have a number of prayer requests today. Uh, we want to, of course, continue to pray for this coronavirus, uh, the reports of of people with the coronavirus COVID-19 has been going up uh, all around us even in Monroe County and we'll mention a few folks in a moment uh, we also encourage you to be praying for the uh, health care professionals who are our first line of defense against this virus the, the physicians the nurses and medical professionals who risk their lives with the virus uh, we have lost over a thousand doctors and nurses in this country in the last nine months to the COVID-19 because those professionals are trying to work to keep the rest of us well. So we ask you to encourage you to be praying for medical professionals and, uh, and also for the uh, doctors and researchers who are working on these vaccines that they uh, that they have very high uh, high hopes for and may uh, get approval with the FDA very soon. So be praying for for all those working for our the health of all of us and pray for all, for everyone to know the blessing and healing of the Lord and, and of his Holy Spirit. We uh, we want to admit, we want to ask you to be praying and, and and also giving thanks to the Lord for Sue Hamilton, our choir director, program director. She's with us this morning, playing piano. She had a heart cath Wednesday afternoon. Everything went very very well. So she's uh, glad to share uh, thanks to the Lord this morning for that. We all praise the Lord that she's doing so well. Uh, Sue is also asking to be praying for. for Aileen Robinson, who lives in Cleveland, Tennessee, she was taken to the hospital Thursday morning and diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, we give thanks to the Lord that Jan Johnson, who began our worship service this morning, had her second very successful cataract procedure this week. She's doing great. Pray for John Hovenagel. Uh, he uh, he broke his leg uh, over a week ago, and he said recently that his broken leg is improving. So pray for be in prayer for for John. Also remember the Strickland family, as uh, several of them have COVID nineteen, and all of them are confined to home or are uh, uh, quarantined. Uh, Marilyn Pugh called the office this week and uh, asked us to put her on the prayer list, so let us remember Marilyn Pugh. Also pray for Irid Lee and his family, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, Barbara's uh, brother, uh, Irid Lee. And let's remember Carol McKenzie's sister, Virginia Jacob. She's under hospice care. 
pray for Vicki Adams, a friend of Mary Kefauver, and for my wife's uh, co-workers uh, who have COVID-19 at uh, her co-workers at Target in Maryville. Uh, please pray for Vanessa Bars and Aunt Rosie, uh, who's battling cancer, having a rough time of it. And pray for the family of Tyler Davidson, who was killed in a truck accident a few days ago. Tyler attended our church when he was a child and was active in our children's program, so remember his family. And pray for Nancy Saggio, a friend of Reba and Dwayne Hopkins. And uh, remember the family of uh, uh, Josh Benson and his family, the pastor at uh, Maryville Madisonville, Church of God. Uh, Josh's father, Bobby Benson, passed away a few days ago due to COVID-19. So remember Josh and his family in your prayers. And uh, Reba and Dwayne also asking prayer for our friend Jeff Dodd. Uh, continue to pray for the Grubb family. Sam is at Madisonville Rehab. Uh, continue to pray for the Bargers as Ben battles pneumonia after having a bout with uh, COVID-19. And Emma Tate is recovering from a recent heart surgery at, at home in Maryville, so let's keep Emma Tate in your prayers. Continue to pray for Mabel Graham as she looks at options for cancer treatment. And pray for Dora Nelson, Clifton Greenwood, Margaret Marshall, Dwayne Peters, Pat Harvey, Debbie Denton, and others uh, and their families as they battle cancer. Uh, remember Carol Rocking as she recovers from surgery. Pray for Tiffany McCoy and for Trish. Pray for Marlene Tears' great niece Carolyn Walker as she recovers from COVID. Continue to pray for Kat Ahart for her mother Barbara. Uh, continue to pray for Sherry McConkey as she recovers from foot surgery. Pray for Carol and Cheryl and Sue Price, friends of Kat Ahart. Pray for Karen Vance McQueen. Uh, also lift up Shane Garrett and uh, pray for Tim Johnson and for Patty Lehman, Lois Green's daughter. And remember Barbara and Tom Rapp Raper in your prayers as well. And pray for all the schools in Monroe County and, and I guess schools all over the country as uh, they're trying to deal with the uh, COVID-19 outbreaks and uh, the possibility of the or the necessary necessity perhaps of uh, doing some uh, school online or or virtual as they call it while well, remembering all those prayer concerns oh all right sue uh, uh, Child and father-in-law, and Adam and Theron, and I just got one from Megan. Uh, uh, said that literally she just found out her neighbors had tested positive for COVID recently, and then McDonald's. Uh, you know, McDonald's. Yeah, repeat that. Megan, uh, Kevin's neighbors. So, okay. Kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, All right. So let's remember the keepovers. Son, son and his wife, uh, son Adam, Adam T. Farmer and his wife as they struggle with COVID-19, and the McDonald's in uh, Sweetwater as they have been diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, well, as we look at over 13 million Americans who've been diagnosed now with COVID-19, uh, some of them have recovered, of course. Uh, but over 266,000 Americans have died from COVID-19. Uh, we need to continue to take it seriously, wear your masks, uh, and all that, uh, all those things they tell us. But most of all right now, we need to pray. Pray about these folks, pray for folks who are fighting cancer. We sometimes forget with all the news about COVID-19 and all, all the concerns about coronavirus spreading across the country, there are other diseases that have not given up. Uh, people still struggle with cancer and, and with the emphysema and with other diseases. So let's, uh, let's be in prayer for all these folks and uh, bow our heads and hearts. Let us go to the Lord with our prayer.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, as we begin this Advent season this year, we remember that you love the world so much that you gave your only Son to free us from the ancient power of sin and death. Help us, Lord, who wait for his coming, and we ask that you might lead us to true liberty. May we be filled with hope, the hope of forgiveness, and the hope of eternal life, all through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we lift up to you our concerns. We pray, Lord, for all those who struggle with uh, COVID-19 and all those uh, doctors, nurses, and health professionals who are doing all they can, who are spending 40, 50, 60, 70 hours a week in some places uh, battling COVID-19 and trying to provide for the health uh, and welfare for so many patients in hospitals as so many hospitals are getting uh, near or, or over capacity for uh, treating people who are sick with coronavirus and of course people who are sick with all various other diseases. We pray, Lord, for those who are struggling with cancer and who are receiving cancer treatments. We ask, Lord, that you will bless their lives. Heal them, we pray, and use the advances of modern medicine as if it were tools in your hands to provide for healing and recovery. We pray, Lord, for those suffering from even other diseases and illnesses and injuries who are in hospitals or recuperating at home, and we ask, O oh Lord, that you will bless their lives, give them strength, and help them to recuperate well. We pray, Lord, that your grace and mercy might touch the lives of all those in need, especially those who are struggling even before the coronavirus hit, uh, a pandemic hit, uh, those struggling with uh, homelessness or near homelessness, those uh, having difficulty putting enough food on the table for them and their families. We pray, Lord, your blessing upon all those who are struggling. And we ask, Lord, that you will continue to bless the people who volunteer at the Good Shepherd Center and bless the Good Shepherd Center with, uh, with the gifts of Christian people and on all people of goodwill who get to support the Good Shepherd Center to provide for people in Monroe County, and especially in this part of Monroe County, who are struggling to put food on their tables. We ask, O oh Lord, that you'll bless those who give and those who serve in food pantries around this country and around the world. Bless them, Lord, in their service to you and to others in this time of uh, uh, trial for so many, so many at this, these dates. And we pray, Lord, that you will show the grace and comfort of your Holy Spirit to those who have lost loved ones in recent days and weeks, especially Josh Benson and his family uh, at the Madisonville Church of God. We pray, Lord, that you will show your blessing and the comfort and strength of your Holy Spirit to all who have lost loved ones in recent weeks. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will help us to serve you more fully with our lives and with our words and with our deeds. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will help us to walk with you more closely, that we might serve you more gladly, and that we might give witness to you in what we say and what we do. But Jesus Christ is the crucified one, is alive and living today, and living in our lives and in our hearts. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you help us each and every day to pray about these concerns and many others that we come across. And we remember, Lord Jesus, that you taught your disciples to pray, and you even still teach us to pray with the words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for it. Amen. Join me in singing our humming, our hymn of meditation. Here I am to worship. Oh, Lord. 
If you'll ask the children now to come a little closer to your screen or those who are with us this morning, if you'll sort of lean forward uh, for a moment. We want to remember that, uh, that this is the beginning of a special season, the Christmas season. Christmas is coming. And of course, in a lot of churches, and uh, certainly in our church, we call this season the four weeks be, that lead to Christmas Day, we call it the season of Advent. Why? Why do we do that? Why do we call it the season of Advent? Well, what does Advent mean? Well, let's remember. Uh, from Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 1, verses uh, 22 and 23, we read uh, the, the words, actually, of the angel speaking to uh, Joseph. All this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel. Well, Advent is a word that means about to come or about to arrive. It means that Jesus, our Savior, was about to arrive. And remember, remember, this is the first Advent or the first coming of Jesus, our Savior, when he was born into the world, born of a miracle. Um, the Bible does tell us that there is a second coming of Jesus one day, that he will come again, and he won't come as a baby. He will come as the King of kings and Lord of lords. He came this first time to be our Savior. And he'll come again one day, someday, uh, as our King and Lord for eternity. Well, let us pray. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, we give you thanks and praise for the privilege of worshiping you in this time in November and December that we call Advent, the season of Advent, the season of your coming, of your first coming. Lord Jesus, help us to appreciate all that you have given to us and all that you have done for us and all that you shall do for us. Lord, help us look with anticipation to once again celebrating the birth of our Savior into our world in the season of Advent. For we thank you and praise you in his name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, at this moment, we want to take time to uh, take up the offering. And those of you who are with us in the cars or parked in, the, or parked in your cars or sitting in the parking lot this morning, uh, ushers will come around in a moment with some buckets. Uh, you can give your offering. Those of you who are not here today, you can look to the website that you're on, oneumcm.com, and you can learn of several different ways that you can uh, make your donations to the Lord's work at First United Methodist Church in Madisonville. One way is you can simply mail your check and mail it to First United Methodist Church, P.O. Box 157, Madisonville, Tennessee, and the zip code is 37354. Or you can bring your check by the church office some weekday morning. Now, we'll say that we're, there's going to be a few less hours that our office will be open in the next week or two as the uh, coronavirus seems to surge in Monroe County. Uh, uh, some of our office staff will be home a little more often. But just call first and, and uh, to see if Reba or Sue or I are at the church office. Or you can, you can just uh, look online. You can give electronically, and there's all kinds of directions at the church website about how to do that. At this time, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you and praise you for the gift of your everlasting and unlimited love. 
And we thank you, Lord, for all that you have given to us. And now as we give back to you a tithe, a tenth, a gift, an offering to go for the work of Jesus Christ in this congregation, we pray, Lord, that you will lead us and guide us. Bless those who give and bless these gifts that they might go towards continuing the ministry of Jesus Christ through, through our congregation and beyond that through missions and, and outreach around the world, the world may know that there's hope, there is forgiveness, there is salvation and everlasting life in Jesus Christ our Lord. We thank you and we praise you in his name. Amen. All right. Our scripture lesson this morning is again what we had shared in our uh, in our call to worship from Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 through 7 for a child has been born to us a son is given to us authority rests upon his shoulders and he is called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace his authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, our gracious Lord, we thank you for the privilege to worship you on this first Sunday of Advent. We ask, O oh Lord, that your Holy Spirit might move amongst us here upon all of us who are sharing in our praise and worship this morning online and, uh, and listening on the radio. We thank you for your grace, for your mercy, and for the privilege to praise you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Advent of his birth. And now, Lord, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts might be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, the pre-Christmas or the Advent season has begun. So has shopping season. I heard in the last day or two that online shopping has gone up a lot. Uh, shopping in stores has dropped somewhat because of the uh, coronavirus pandemic. But, uh, you know, even though we call the day after Thanksgiving Black Friday, to be honest, didn't shopping for Christmas begin weeks ago or even months ago, at least before Halloween? One woman said about the season confusion, now I'm more ready to think about Christmas now than we're at the end of December. The confusing thing for her is all the Christmas decorations in the stores have been up since what, Labor Day? I'm picturing myself eventually doing my 4th of July picnic shopping and my Christmas shopping at the same time. It gets earlier every year, doesn't it? I've been experiencing some major season confusion for months. Well, from now on, you can do your back-to-school shopping and Christmas shopping at the same time. In fact, I won't be surprised if some people will see some of the after-Christmas shopping uh, discounts in Dece on December 26th and the 27th and the 28th, and they start stocking up for next Christmas. Now, if you think that some people are planning too far ahead for their Christmas shopping, Let's just remember that God planned ahead for thousands of years ahead for that first Christmas. To remind us of how far ahead God planned, let us remember that God revealed the first coming of the Son of God, known in the Old Testament as the Messiah, to the, the Anointed One, to the prophets centuries before that first Christmas. Let's look for a few minutes this morning and what the Bible teaches about the uh, foreseeing of the coming of the Son of God at that first advent. The prophets foretold of the Messiah 
Uh, first of all, in, with Abraham, Abraham, the man, the first person of faith, talked about in the Old Testament who had true, deep faith in God. God promised to Abraham to bless his descendants, the nation of Israel, and through them to bless all the peoples of the earth in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3. Now, in the years after David and Solomon, though, the king of Israel and, and his son, the third king of Israel, the hope and promise of God to Abraham seemed to fade. The people of Israel uh, just wouldn't stay faithful to, to God and God's law, the law of Moses. They often disobeyed God. And it seemed that the faithfulness of all the people depended on where the king of Israel was godly and trusting and obedient to God. Many times those kings were not. And as their spiritual life wilted, so did the faith of the Israelite people. The prophets, however, brought a renewed vision for Israel for the fulfillment of Abraham's vision. They foresaw great days again for Israel, for a nation and people that trusted and obeyed God would see great things happen as we heard in the quotation from Isaiah 60, shared this morning by uh, Reba and Duane at the Advent wreath lighting, or the quotation from Isaiah chapter 9 that we looked at uh, in the call to worship. Let's see then what the prophets did tell us. What the prophets told us was the first prophecy of the Messiah in the Old Testament is actually, many people think, in the first book of the Old Testament, of the Hebrew Bible, the book of Genesis, traditionally attributed to being written by Moses, uh, we see in Genesis, in the Garden of Eden, at the very moment of Adam and Eve's disobedience to God, it foretells of one who will confront the devil. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, the Lord is, is telling Adam and Eve the limitations they will have now because of their disobedience to God and their sin. But the Lord God said to the serpent, the servant of, of evil, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals, among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, you will strike his heel. And although that seems to many kind of an obscure statement, there are a lot of Bible scholars who say that was the first kind of veiled reference to the coming of the Messiah who, although the, the, the servant of evil will strike the Messiah on the heel or strike him as we see him crucified several thousand years later at the same time the son of man will crush the head of evil you know, the prophet Malachi tells us that Elijah would come before the Messiah would appear and uh, we'll look at more of that next week the prophet Micah tells us that the birthplace of the Messiah will be Bethlehem. We'll look more at that in a, in, a, in a few weeks. The prophet Isaiah, who gave the most prophecies about the coming of the Messiah, foretold that a virgin would conceive and bear a son, even as we uh, uh, see from the, the Bible reading earlier this morning. Uh, and Psalm 72 told us that kings would offer the Messiah gifts and in the Advent wreath reading earlier, we read that nations will come to your light and kings to your brightness. And the prophet Hosea tells us that God would call his son out of Egypt, as we'll see uh, in a week or so, as we look at Mary and Joseph. Hosea chapter 11, verse 1, Hosea said, when Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I have called my son. Now that was in some ways Hosea reminding the people of Israel that God had called them out of slavery in Egypt, 
But it's also thought to since he said, since I saved my son out of Egypt, a veiled reference again to the Messiah. Isaiah also tells, made it clear that a certain sign of the Messiah would be his healing of the deaf and blind. We see in Isaiah chapter 29 and chapter 35. Isaiah also foretold that the Messiah would be rejected by his own people. The famous passage in Isaiah chapter 53. Psalm 41 9 foretold that a close friend of the Messiah would betray him. And Isaiah foresaw the cruel and harsh treatment that the Messiah would one day receive as Jesus did receive on the, when he was beaten and flogged and then taken to the cross. There are so many more examples of the prophets foretelling of the actions and circumstances surrounding the Messiah that were fulfilled in the life and death of Jesus. So what do the prophets tell us today? Well, they tell us that Jesus of Nazareth is exactly who he said that he was. And the prophets today tell us that the first apostles were exactly right in who they said Jesus was and is. And they tell us that we need to believe in Jesus as the Messiah and Savior and trust him as our own Savior and Lord. His was the most important birth in all of human history. It's so incredible to think that a baby born in a little town in an obscure province of the mighty Roman Empire so many centuries ago was forecast with such expectation by the Hebrew prophets. However, babies have grown into the world changing, into world changing persons at other times. Just look at the year 1809. The international scene was tumultuous. Napoleon was sweeping through Austria and across Europe. Blood was flowing freely. Nobody then cared about babies. They were worried about the Napoleonic Wars. But the world was overlooking some very significant births in 1809. For example, William Gladstone was born that year. He was destined to become one of England's finest statesmen. That same year, Alfred Tennyson was born to an obscure minister and his wife. That child would one day become a person, an adult, who would one day greatly affect the literary world in a marked manner. On the American continent, Oliver Wendell Holmes was born in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And not far away in Boston, Edgar Allan Poe began his eventful, although tragic, life. It was also in that same year that a physician named Darwin and his wife named their child Charles Robert Darwin. And that same year produced the cries of a newborn infant in a rugged log cabin in Hardin County, Kentucky. That baby's name was Abraham Lincoln. Now if there had been news broadcasts at the time of Napoleon, I'm sure those word, these words would have been heard. The destiny of the world is being shaped on an Austrian battlefield today. But history was actually being shaped in the cradles of England and America. Similarly, 2,000 years ago, everyone thought taxation in the Roman Empire was the big news when Jesus was being born. But a young Jewish woman cradled the biggest news that the world has ever known, the birth of the Savior. Well, how about you, my friends? Are you ready to believe in Jesus as your Savior? Do you want Jesus to be real to you? Remember, we said before, one way to realize the love, the power, and the presence of Jesus in your life is to give generously to others in his name at this time of year. Let us pray. Almighty God, our gracious Lord, we thank you and praise you that you have sent us a Savior. You have sent us a Savior born not in a king's palace, but foretold by prophets, born in a stable, in a 
the little town of Bethlehem, near the capital city of Jerusalem of a small province of the Roman Empire, certainly out of the way of history's monumental events of those years. And yet, the life of that baby became the most important life by which we tell the time on this planet, by which we tell the years on this planet before his birth and after his birth. Lord Jesus, we ask you to be real to us. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to forgive us of our sins, to cleanse us and lead us forward, that we might live lives of faith in you, trust in you each and every day. Help us, Lord, become more the persons you want us to become. And help us, Lord, to give generously to help those who are hurting around us. There's a lot of folks who are hurting right now, Lord, with this, this coronavirus pandemic. Lord, help us to reach out to others with your hands to share the love of Christ by what we do, what we give, and the words we say. For we ask this in Jesus' wonderful name. We're going to sing one more hymn this morning. Hark the herald angels sing. Hark the herald angels sing. Written, I believe, by Charles Wesley, the younger brother of John Wesley, the founders of the Methodist movement that became the Methodist Church. Let us sing together. Hark the herald angels sing. benediction now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit amen
bless you with this love this week.